Okay, here we go. So this morning I called this class Vast Expansive Body ah, so that we can start to conceive that when we're doing exercise and when we're moving, that we're doing it in the interest of finding more space inside of our bodies, more relationship to the space outside of our bodies and to feel better in our bodies. So it's interesting, like when people, people are like, oh, people who haven't like spent their life dancing or exercising and they're like, oh yeah, I gotta go and do this stuff. I'm like, oh, you're so lucky. You're finding your body. You're coming into a relationship with yourself. So if it's not fun, or if it's not enjoyable, shift the situation, find things that you like to do. So vast, expansive body, inhaling, open, reaching out and imagining that you are just a star radiating out into the universe and release, inhale, radiating out, reaching toward all the other stars. And let's just shake it out to go down, sparkling your stardust all over the place. Inhale, open it up. And exhale, easy shake, shake it down, releasing your energy. So a little stuck patterning can start to release with the shake out. Inhale, open. And exhale, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And then let's do a jazz hands shaking up. Inhale and jazz hands shaking down. Jazz hands, shake those jazz hands up and jazz hands shaking down. Then we're gonna do it different. So it's gonna be mobilizing your fingers like this. We call that sparkle fingers, actually sparkle fingers are that, but I'm gonna call this sparkle fingers for our day today. All your fingers moving around as if you're combing through the space with your fingers, feeling into the space. So right now we're moving in the vertical plane, the here I am, check me out in my expansiveness plane. And then we're gonna go into the horizontal plane, just easy spirals, twisting, looking around behind you. Ah, finding your breath, seeing what's back there, radiating again. You can really reach out through your arms or they can be more relaxed and just hanging. Like think of those, are those those swings that they have at like the, the fair that the swing goes around and the, it's like in a circle and the swings go around and as you go faster and faster, the swings go out more and more. So it's that centrifugal force, sending your arms out, letting the blood flow come from your heart out to the very edges, the little capillaries in your fingertips. And thinking of the heart as this expansive system of your whole body, blood flowing through, heart in there pumping or expressing in this way. And then just to, to name this very interesting thing, let's just touch into the capillaries of our fingers or imagine that we're doing that. When we get out to these distal edges, so here's core, distal, center to edge. When we come into this distal edge of our body, this is the place in our body where the blood often is switching from being arterial blood that is nourishing our body to returning back to the heart, uh, eliminating, carrying with it the waste. So this is that shifting point where blood is going out to the edges and then it changes and comes back. So our arterial blood is changing to venous blood returning in. And it's coming along the same sort of pathways, but not the same channel. Inhale, lift and open again just feeling into the spaciousness inside of our own bodies. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And let's just go with our head turning from side to side. As you're turning your head from side to side, imagine your shoulders expansive, soft, melted and released. So there's no backpack of expectations, backpack of I have to, I should, or anything that you're holding on to, just let that melt off, dripping down your shoulders as you turn your head from side to side. And as you're looking around, seeing the world around you, let it arrive in your eyes. So you're not making an effort to look out there. You're letting the world come in, receiving the world. Then we're gonna go back up into this vertical dimension, one arm and then the other. And it's like you're climbing up to the sky, climbing to the heavens, and as you're climbing to the he heavens, start to also move through your feet. So you're also grounding yourself. So one hand is going up and that side of the body, the foot is picking up off the floor. So there's a weight shift. There's some side side movement. We're getting into our 
diaphragm, our rib cage, lungs, heart, our spine with this movement up and down. We're having this weight shift and you kind of have to balance on one foot. And if it's, if you can let your head go off vertical. So our head normally wants to be erect in this righted position. We have a natural reflex that keeps our head lifted. You can see babies as they start to have more control over their head, how they're picking up their heads. All right, circles with your pelvis, circling around. So again, that was the vertical dimension, up, down with a little bit of side, side. And now we're in cycling our pelvis in the horizontal, getting those femur heads, that bone of the, the thigh, up into the hip socket and just really letting it mobilize. So we're greasing up that joint, synovial fluid in the joint, and we're taking up space with our pelvis. Change direction, other way. Pubic bone reaches forward, tailbone reaches back. And just as you're doing this, let any kind of inhibition fall away that you've been carrying in your pelvis, like what you should look like, how you should behave. <laughs> let that just crack away with the movement. So you don't have to hold anything extra in there. Ah, and then come in and we're gonna do a weight shift. Weight shift onto one leg, onto the other leg. So shifting from side to side, catching a little balance when you get there, picking up one leg. You can have your hands out slightly in front of you if that is helpful or hands on your hips. If your hands are on your hips, bring your elbows out to the side so you're widening through your body. And for, then we're gonna add to it. You're gonna come onto one leg, stretch your leg out, flex your foot, point your toes, fold it in. Other side, coming onto that leg, reach it out. Flex, point, fold it in. Side step, reach it out. Flex, point, fold it in. You could also do it here where you're just staying to the ground. If you need both legs on the floor, here is another possibility. You go to one side, you touch down, reach it out, bring it in. Go to one side, touch down, out and in. Or up here, Um, I'm going to be teaching at the Y this week a, uh, what is it called? Low impact, a low impact cardio. And I'm like, hmm, what am I going to do? We're going to do a lot of stuff like this. And since I am still recovering with this knee injury, like I don't want to be doing a lot of impact. Come in, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Blah. Relax your neck and tongue. Let me just shut some of these doors. For some reason, I never do it before I start the class. And then I think, wow. Anthony's still sleeping. I should be more quiet or at least shut the doors. All right, let's reach into space again. So we're gonna work with one hand reaching up on the diagonal. You're gonna come down cross to the opposite diagonal. So reaching through space, radiating out, big shift of the weight and crossing over. So we're moving through the vertical plane and we're crossing through the vertical plane. Open on top, crossed at the bottom. One more, open on top crossed at the bottom. Same thing on the other side, reaching to the high point, crossing down to the low point. So this is probably your high left and low right, crossing through. So like there's that door corner, we're in the door plane, touching the corners of the door plane. As deep or shallow as you wanna go with that, you can take it really far down or not, but try to bend your knees and get your butt going down a little bit and relax. Now I'm getting excited. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do a bunch of space with them in the cardio class. So let's take this hand, which is my right, it's probably your left. We're gonna cross on top, crossing to the high opposite corner and then opening down to this point. Crossing up, opening down, crossing up, opening down. You could leave both legs on the floor or not. So in that door plane, touching high cross down to low. So this might be your high right to low left. In my case, it's the opposite and change it to the other side, right? So we can narrow in, crossing our body is also a way. Well, it's gonna open up our back, right? Even if we're closing the front, good chance the back is opening. So sometimes we think like, oh, the front is open. I'm really open. But in this point, I've kind of closed the back. Now I've closed the front. 
closing the back, closing the front. So if we're shifting into forward backward space, we're gonna be opening or closing one of those. Other side, crossing up, opening down, crossing up, opening down. Here's your opportunity to get up there on your tippy toes and down, crossing up high, lowering down. So this is probably your high left to low right. High left, low right, high left, hello right, one more. This is a very Laban space harmony class, but in an exercise format with the interest of really finding more spaciousness in our bodies, right? So we're not just opening up our body into this, we're also opening up our mind to reach away, take up more space, right? How, ah, what does it feel like to radiate out into those diagonals? Just shifting your weight and finding like this diagonal, Shift to the other side, find this diagonal. Shift, elbow and knee, reach it out. Shift, elbow and knee, reach it out. So when we're doing this, we're working this contralateral cross body pattern. That is part of our advance as quadrupeds and humans that walk erect where we work this contralateral movement. So let's just do it forward and backward. But let's exaggerate it a little bit. So forward, you're gonna just reach arm and leg, cross your body, reaching out, boom, like you're gonna kick the camera or my or me. And then back, how are we gonna do it back? Back is gonna be like that. Arm is gonna balance you out, reaching forward, other leg reaching back. So coming forward, opposite arms leg forward. Going back, it's still the opposite arm to leg. There is my opposite arm to leg. One, but I'm, my same arm is reaching forward. Good. Sagittal dimension, forward and backward. Do I want to? No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Making decisions. Am I ready to go forward? Maybe not. Yes, I am. So let's just play again with that forward backward, but we're going to cycle with our arms. So first we'll just do bowling, rolling and bowling, rocking forward and back. And if you have... Oh, shoulder issue, you can always do this with your hand on your shoulder. So you're still getting the movement in the joint, but not the whole weight of your arm. And we'll keep on that side and change it. We're gonna circle up and over like a throw, except for this throw doesn't have to come straight through. It's gonna just be a big arm circle. Breathing into your lungs. Filling up with space, using that air uh, the flow of air, the flow of breath to bring more ease into your body. Switching to the other side. So bowling first, down and up. Bowling the bowling ball, right? If I go pure sagittal in my arm circle and with my hand relating to that bowling ball, there's a more, there's a bigger chance that I will get a strike, right? But if I kind of wonk it around, it's not, it might not be a strike. I might go, I might have a gutter ball. Finding spaciousness in the body through movement. A lot easier to find spaciousness in the body through movement than through stillness, in my opinion. Up and over. We already have, for most people, way too much stillness in our lives. <laughs> if you sit at a computer all day long and then you go and do something really intense like a hit class, that's pretty harsh on your body. <laughs> So you might want to try and get up off from the computer and move around a little bit more often. Like even if it's drink a lot of water, so you have to go to the bathroom and pee a lot, just so that you're getting up and moving. More regular amounts, doses of movement throughout the day are maybe more important than being really, really still for most of the day. And then boom, 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 doing some major stuff, especially as we get older. We need to just keep greasing up the inside. All right. I think we did both sides of that. I think I just got on a big waffle during the throw. Let's find the horizontal plane. So we're gonna take, you're gonna take your right hand, you're gonna cross to the front, reaching across your body to the opposite diagonal, and then open it to the back diagonal. And taking it forward diagonal and back. And it doesn't really look like it in the, in the camera, I think, because it's lower than I am and that this horizontal plane is for me, but my arm is staying pretty much the same height away from the floor the whole time, crossing, and opening, thinking about this as an activity of the whole body, the lungs, the fingers, the heart, right? 
even as we enclose, we're nestling the heart and change it to the other side, same thing. Crossing over, forward, middle, to the back. So this is probably your right forward middle to left back middle. Table plane, as if you're in the middle of a big rectangular table, the heads are on to the sides of your body. So they're not forward and backward of you. They're on the sides. Couple more times, nestling the heart, loving the inner body, and then expanding out, radiating out into the universe. And open, and last one and open it up. Yeah, this is like the exercise where we keep moving. There's the mat exercise, which we'll get to in a minute. Also fantastic. Let's do a spiral. If we were moving in a cube, we'd be, let's do it this one. We're gonna go to right forward high. So right forward and high, we're gonna cross back to left back low. So imagining you're in a cube, you're touching that inner diagonal, getting that spiral opening up, spiraling down behind you. Inhale, open right forward high, crossing left back low. Right forward high, left back low. Same thing on the other side, left forward high, crossing right back low. So I'm talking about the space, not the body part. Left forward high, right back low. And if I'm cueing the wrong stuff, please forgive me because I'm doing the opposite anyway. Left forward high, right back low, last one. And spiraling down. And just let's take a second to feel like, what is it like to be in one of those expansive open positions in compared to like where you're spiraling and crossing down either behind you or in front? Let's just try that. So it's gonna be with your feet and your arms that you're gonna cross to the back with your foot in front, open it up, cross arm forward, leg back, open it up. So arm is always going forward, <laughs> open it up and then back and behind you, opening up. So my leg is crossing front and then opening and my leg is crossing back, but my arms are always crossing in front, right? Crossing front, oh, if your brain is frying, then so is mine. But maybe this just feels like, oh, I'm feeling this different movement. I'm either going forward or with the leg back. This will help you at your dance lesson where you wanna like, oh, I wanna partner dance. Sometimes it takes a long time to learn that, but this is the way to connect in that sometimes. It always takes a long time to learn that. If you already had a lot of skills already, that was part of the long time of learning it. All right, other side. So this arm and this leg are crossing front. And then the arm crosses front and the leg crosses back. <sighs> inhale, exhale, inhale. Sometimes people are like, oh, that crossing, that felt really weird. Open it up. So we wanna have access to moving in these different ways. Open it up, crossing back, <sighs> opening it up, crossing forward. And I'm turning my head every time I do the cross. So I'm looking to where I'm crossing to. Open, cross back, front, open. This is our last one, cross back and open it up. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. We're gonna go with, this is gonna be the last standing thing, I think. We're gonna open up into an X and you're gonna cross front, cross front, cross back, cross back, front, front, back, back, front, front, back, back, front, front, back, back. I'm gonna do it a little bit longer because I imagine that if anyone's watching this on the YouTubes, you're probably going, what? Might take you a minute to get there. Back, back, crossing to the front, crossing to the front, crossing to the back, crossing to the back, front, front, back, back. I'm hitting my ankle, ankle, my knee is bent, foot, foot, one more time, last one, back, back. And let's take it down to the floor and just roll out our backs from doing that. Exciting movement. 
as I figure out what I'm going to do in my cardio class. Ah, I only have to do half an hour of low impact cardio and then it's, I can do whatever I want. So although I, mean, I can really just go and do whatever I want anyway. It's nice to honor the, the, what the class is. All right, so first let's just start with these uh, really relaxed, easy knee drops, opening through the middle and closing, allowing this to massage out your back, letting the support structure of your spine relate to gravity in a different way. So when I say structure, we have such bad language for talking about body because usually it sounds like it's architectural or a machine. These are biomorphic, dynamic, living processes. So organic structures, which don't have anything to do with, unless you've got like a hip replacement, you, you are not in any way like metal right? <laughs> or any mechanical materials, although that's starting to change. But yeah, you might have pins in your body. So you may have metal in your body, but the living organic part of your body, which is probably integrated that metal, the metal is not going to change and become alive because it's in your body. I don't know what I'm saying. Let's cross this over, spiral a little deeper. What I'm saying is that we are like more about water and air and earth, like living earth, than we are about, or like mycelial systems, than we are like a, a architecture. So, Allowing the living river of your spine, that's a Liz Koch analogy, to have some fluidity, especially inside. Imagine that your spinal cord inside your spine, the, your vertebrae, has lots of space, lots of room in there. How are we going to get that room through movement? Breaking up any stickiness, any adhesions that are unhelpful at this point body can recompost the stuff that's going on inside, right? We can break things down also. We're not just calcifying, calcifying, calcifying. We also have the capacity to become more fluid and more easy. Ah, so taking a big, deep breath, just shake out your legs and then let them fall and drop down to the floor. And again, you're gonna pick, think of like little, Lower Dantian engagement, pick up the legs, lower abs, up, shake, 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 shake it around, jiggle it, and then let them fall gently and then all the way down to the floor. Third time, lower Dantian, engage and lift, lift, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. I am freeing up my spine as well, head tail connection, and then releasing and coming down. And let's go with the uh, Let's take the arms overhead, deep inhale. And then you can exhale, press your pelvis up. Inhaling down, filling up with breath and exhale, push through the ceiling. Inhale down, exhale, press it up, back body working. Inhale down, front body and back body descending down to the floor. Exhale, everything moves forward and up. Well, your pelvis does. Arms are doing the opposite. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, open, exhale, push. Inhale, fill up your lungs. Deep breath, exhale. Press, last one. Inhale down, exhale, press. Stay up there. You're going to take a deep inhale up so that you're... Lift a little higher, chest comes into your chin. You're going to hold that chest to chin as you exhale three quarters of the breath out. Hold the exhale and roll it down. Once you hit the bottom, relax, inhale, let everything fill back up. So it's the rebound of an inhale because we've sort of created this vacuum of the exhale. Especially if we hold the exhale and we roll down, Everything's going to kind of be vacuumed in there. <laughs> These are pressure systems. And if we make that breath hold, it's going to shift things around for us. So it's shape-shifting our organs a little bit, internal massage. One more time. 
press it up, take a deep breath in, chest to chin, hold that chest to chin as you exhale breath out. So you're holding it towards you, exhale, exhale, and then roll down, holding the exhale. Ah, once you relax down, let the air just rush back in. So there's like a pressure system that's gonna fill up and just allow that inhale to be really like your first breath, just filling up the system with air. So let's do it one more time. Take it up, big inhale, chest to chin. Try to keep that lift as you exhale three quarters of the air out. So you're keeping your rib cage up as you're exhaling and then roll it down through your spine. Ah, let the air fill back up. And from there, let's just take a happy baby. So inner space of the lungs, inner space of the breath. and building a relationship with the air that we're breathing, right? Building a relationship. It's symbiotic. Like we require the air of this earth. We require the air of this planet. And not only do we require it, every other person out there is breathing the same air, right? Which right now our air quality is kind of getting worse again. So ah, take advantage of the good breath when you have the good air maybe don't do the huge deep breath. We're still in the moderate phase. We haven't gone to yuck, totally yuck. So it's like, uh, anyway, maybe don't do the intense breathing practices if the air quality is really bad, <laughs> right? At that point, you just want to maintain lung function, but not push it. All right. One leg up, the other leg down, drawing it in towards you. Let's go flex, demi point, point, toes, heel, toes, point, toes, heel, toes, both feet point, toes, heel, toes, point, change it to the other leg, toes, heel, toes, point, like you're peeling a banana, toes, point, toes, heel, and then you're putting the peel back, point, toes, heel, toes, point, change, circle both ankles a couple times in one direction, and then the other direction, Mine are going in opposite directions, just so you know, they're not going the same way. Change it, circles one way, circles the other way, and then relax your head down to the floor. Just turn it from side to side, release your spine. Again, head tail freeing up the river of the spine. Fluid, lots of capacity for movement. So wagging your head and tail, creating the inner space, the inner resilience from your brain through your nervous system out into your body, right? Routing out. And as we talked about, like those capillaries where the arterial flow switches to venous flow are right there out at the edges of your body, in your fingers, in your toes. I want to learn more about that. This is a Bonnie Brainbridge Cohen idea that I learned from Florence Poulin, who is teaching um, some classes up here at the Center for Creative, Ed, uh, Creative Arts. Wait, that's not it. At the Cornell Creative Arts Center, Cornell Creative Arts Center. She's teaching on Tuesday nights and I am teaching ballet starting today on Monday nights. All right, so let's do a switch, switch, switch and circle, switch, switch, three switches and a, and a half circle. So you have one, two, three, let's flex for the circle away from each other, half circle, pointing one, two, three, flex and circle open, pointing one, two, three, flex and open, pointing one, two, three, flex and open, one, two, three, flex, open, one, two, three, flex, open, last set, one, two, three, flex, open, other side, one, two, three, flex, and open, fold it in, 
Feet wider than your sticky mat, internally rotate one leg at a time. Spiraling in. Breathing. Letting this release, you can take your heel and hook it over and hang out. But think of that the side of your butt and hip that's on the floor is getting a nice massage. And then this tissue in your leg, your IT band, your quad, your ab, ad, and hamstring, abductors, adductors, and hamstrings are getting this internal spiral, like a wave inward, just allowing the tissue in your body to have some shear and some mobility against the other layers of the tissue. If the tissue didn't have flexibility, the capacity to shear or to move against itself, you wouldn't be able to move, right? So th those layers of like fascia, which are sometimes very different, like that top layer, the IT band is kind of, is very bandy, dense and strong. And we want it that way, otherwise we wouldn't be able to stand up, right? We need a strong IT band, it shouldn't be loose. But underneath that is another layer of fascia that's very gelatinous with the fibrils going sort of in a different, um, direction. So if this is my, this is my arm, my leg is being, my, this is my IT band underneath is this layer going like that. So if those two layers have lots of mobility, you can turn your leg in and out. You can lift it up. You can move your leg, right? They need that mobility. And then try the other side with the heel hook. Mobility is the capacity to move. Hypermobility is sometimes where people have too much capacity to move. Like in our culture, we think, most people think, oh, it's, I gotta be super flexible. Like that is not always helpful. Sometimes that means your joints are looser, then you have to be much more careful with them. Like we wanna balance to be in the middle of that and bring it in. Of course, if you're a dancer or a contortionist, then you probably need more mobility. Let's press up, interlace your hands behind your back. If possible, walk your shoulders closer together. From here, we're gonna lift up tippy toes, Push up high, lower the heels. Inhale up, press up high, lower the heels. Try to keep that lift up. Heels off, press, lower the heels. 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 Then we're gonna just go flex one foot, flex the other. Flex one foot, your heels on the floor, flex the other. Flex one foot, flex the other. Flex one foot, flex the other, flex them both. Up, down, up, down, up. Really push into the floor as you land. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Last one. Inhale, knees open, roll to the outer edge of your foot. Exhale, knees closed, touching. Inhale, rolling to the outer edge of your foot, coming to the inner edge. Inhale, open, awakening the awareness in the soles of your feet as you're opening and closing, if possible, wake it up. Bring your awareness down to those distal edges of your body, soles of your feet and your toes, turning in, turning out, in and out and in and out. Come into center, open your hands, roll it down vertebra by vertebra, all the way down to the floor. Once you get down to the bottom, shake it out, jiggle, Loosen up your spine, arms and legs up, shake that out too. Ha, ah, and then another happy baby pose. Free your flow in your happy baby. What is a free flow happy baby? It's a baby that's really listening to their body and just moving as feels good. Moving in whatever way feels delicious. Breathing and opening. And then come on your hands on your knees and make circles. Just in case those hip sockets are not well lubricated, they should be by now. Also let this release your lower back. Relax your feet, change direction, circle the other way. And then roll back and forth, rounding through your spine, massaging through your back. If it feels good to take it into a plow, go for it. Yeah, so my shoulders tend to be the tight part, one of the tight parts of my body. And it's partly because my hamstrings are really open. So I'm just gonna hang here for a second. Breathing, upper back, neck, shoulders.
So when you're in a stretch, like that one for me, like it's fairly intense. So I'm trying to relax into it, but not force it and not go further until I feel like I can relax where I am. So let's come up and flip over onto elbows and knees. And take one leg out behind you, just push into your heel, stretching out your calf and Achilles. So this is kind of a weird position to do it, but reaching back through that heel and then coming forward, reaching back, pushing. I could lift up my bottom knee, taking it forward. I'm just getting into the calf and Achilles of that leg, stretching it out. Try picking up that knee, see how that is. Not, not that we want to be like activating everything and like trying so hard. We want to do a little bit of both. Sometimes we're just stretching. Sometimes we're adding that core. And then come in, switch it to the other side. Flexing back. Do it a couple times before you try lifting the knee so that you're getting in there. And then when you're ready, pick up the knee if you can. Just feel what that is. To pick up the knee, I got to push a little bit more into my arms. So I'm pushing maybe curling more into that with my head tail. Last one. And release. And let's come up for a second. Let your uh, blood adjust, right? People come up and like, well, I'm lightheaded. Ah, yes, because we've just changed things around, right? And so, So let's take it down into a side plank. Um, we're gonna do this a little bit differently. So I'm gonna leave my bottom knee down. I'm not gonna pop all the way up to the side plank. Bottom knee is down, arm is, one hand is up, leg is straight down below me. And here I'm just gonna circle my leg, pushing the floor away, making maybe soccer ball size circles with that bottom leg reaching out away from my torso. So all of this is long, long neck, long shoulders, and then flex your foot and change direction, circling the other way. Long body, breathing into it. And release, come down, take the bottom knee forward, top knee back, side stretch here, grabbing on if you need to, to pull. Then from there, you're gonna curl forward, rounding. Inhale, opening, getting a lot of space in the jellyfish of your diaphragm, right? I just watched this Leslie Kamenoff, Gil Headley anatomy discussion from Gil Headley's Live with Gil, which was yesterday. And they were talking about the diaphragm, the anatomy of the diaphragm, and also the way that we're thinking. Like it's really shifting in. The people who are at the edge uh, or the, the moving forward edge, the learning edge of um, embodiment, anatomy, all that kind of stuff are really looking at the body in terms of this, instead of using the image of an umbrella or a balloon, the image of a jellyfish for the diaphragm, it's much more alive, it's much more dynamic. It's a much better image for our bodies than like the umbrella or the dome or the balloon. Like, so thinking of like that living creatureness of our own bodies, that's what we are. We're living creatures, every part of us. All right, switch it around to the other side. And so what I'm saying is that as we're on these positions, like it's not like it's just doing this, right? The way that the movement of our jellyfish diaphragm, when we're in different positions, different pulls and pushes are happening, which is healthy for our organs. Leslie Kamenoff talks about the shape shifting of the breath. Breath wave is shape shifting your whole inner body, your organs, right? Giving it more freedom, more aliveness. And in the Laban work, we talk about growing and shrinking with the breath. There's this natural underlying cellular breathing happening. And it is happening. Like the blood is moving through our body with the oxygen, taking it out to our muscles, taking it out to our organs, coming back with the waste, right? So that is this living pulsing system of our body. All right. Onto the other side, pressing it up. Circles with the bottom, with the top leg, pushing the floor away with the bottom leg, long through your whole body. And then flex and change direction, other way.
and then come in. Bottom leg comes forward, top leg folds in. Side stretch here, hollow and curl. Open it up. Our jellyfish diaphragm in this very interesting position. And then we're gonna change this. And in the interest of breath, and this is another Leslie Kamenoff thing or that I learned from him is that the volume, a lot of the volume of our, the breath in our lungs is actually in the back space, right? Even if you feel like your ribs in the front and your ribs in the back, front ribs are higher, back ribs are down here. Our lungs are a lot in the back and our heart is nestled in between the lungs. So as we breathe, our lungs are massaging our heart. And as our blood flows and pumps, it's massaging our lungs, right? There's this reciprocal relationship that's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and normally in a cat cow, you exhale as you scoop and hollow and you inhale down. But in this, we're going to, we're going to come into this and we're just going to fill up our bodies with breath, filling into the back space. And then you're going to exhale as you arch, inhale. Fill up the back body and exhale. Arch, let the front body drop. Inhale. Open, push the floor away. Exhale, drop. Inhale, fill up the back body. And exhale, drop. Now, because always the best learning happens when you try both things, we're going to go the other way. So we're going to exhale up and inhale down. Inhale. Oh, it often happens that like that kind of deep breathing invites Lord Gaylord into the room. Meditation, breathing, qigong, all those things. He loves it. He's he like likes to be around when that's happening. All right, we're going to do something different. We're going to curl the toes under. And this is that lion yoga lion, where you're going to stick out your tongue and stick out your butt. On the inhale, you can let it come in and fill up with breath and then exhale. Ah, so we can think of the tongue as like the, the whole gut body, tongue to tail or tongue to anus. And when we're working with the tongue as well, that whole gut body is getting this awareness practice, right? Let's let some energy and awareness come into the gut body. So that kind of is great to just get deeper into that tissue so that we're not just working the outer body on this like skeletal muscular level, we're working the whole body as a whole system of life force that's working coherently together all the time. All right, what time is it? I feel like we started late and we're kind of rambling along. We're almost done. Let's just do a couple of stretches and then we'll stand up and breathe for the end. This is one of those really teachy classes. So I hope people come in and check it out and stay until the end. All right, so quick rolling from butt to butt. Let it release through your hips and lower back massaging out your butt, massaging out your sacrum, and then taking both legs out in front of you. Walk your butt from side to side, take it into a forward fold, surrender, let go. In your forward fold, try breathing deep down into your lungs so that they press down into your gut body, down into your belly, into your intestines. So you're filling up with air. You're not trying to not take up space. You're trying to take up space, let your body move. And then rolling it up, opening your arms out, stretching onto one side, little teeny arching curl there, letting the breath do whatever it wants to do, moving slow, moving fast. And then over to the other side, same thing. And then coming in, crossing one leg over the other and spiraling, twist, look around behind you. Feel your sit bones reaching into the ground. 
switch it to the other side. Chest and lungs open and expansive. So I've talked about really about taking up space and being vast, but sometimes like really coming into yourself is the best resource. So just curling in for a second, let your head drop down, bringing yourself into yourself, calling back all the tendrils, all the radiations, all the things of yourself back into yourself. So you're power packing yourself by just coming into resource. And release tension. Good. And then standing on your feet, butt to the ceiling, open your feet wide, just shift from side to side, fluid weight shift like a water reed, pouring one side and then the other a water reed. The water reed isn't pouring. The water is pouring around the reed. You are moving like the reed. And then bend your knees, roll it all the way up to the top, coming up to the top. Inhaling, spacious, expansive body, radiating out way beyond the edges of your skin and releasing and also receiving from way beyond the edges of your skin. So there's a equality in your capacity to go outward and receive inward, right? Coming into yourself, resourcing, radiating out receiving from the outer world, not just giving into the outer world, both it's a give and a receive. Ah, give and receive sounds better than give and take. All right, that is the end of this class. T